This video is part of a series where we build an entire FPV drone from start to finish. So if it feels like you're in the middle of a conversation that you missed the start of, that's why. If you're here for the information in this specific video, keep watching. But if you want to find out the full context for what's going on here, there's a link in the video description to the full playlist, and you might need to go back and start with video number one. In this video, we're going to be installing the DJI O3 air unit in our quadcopter and getting it bound and working with our DJI goggles. If you're using the analog video transmitter or the Walksdale video transmitter, then the steps in this video aren't for you. Uh, you can still watch it. That's your call. But there are videos in the playlist in the video description specifically for your video transmitter. And the good news is that this plug right here means you don't have to do any soldering to get this installed, unlike those other video transmitters. Because DJI is such a freaking 500 pound gorilla of a powerhouse in this industry that the flight controller comes with a plug just for the DJI transmitter and nobody else. <laughs> That's why you got DJI, right? That plug is going to be here on the side of the flight controller next to the USB, and we can just go ahead and plug that in. I said plug that in. Damn it. If it doesn't want to go in, it's probably upside down. Uh, the red wire goes towards the front of the quadcopter. The air unit is going to mount in the rear of the quadcopter, and the camera is going to go to the front. So the antenna here is going to be coming out the back, and this is roughly how the wiring is going to go. And we're going to need to be a little careful here because we don't have a lot of slack in this wire to put the video transmitter where we need it to go. I think we're going to do something like this. I would really rather have the wires run underneath, though, uh, because that keeps them, if they're hanging out the side, they could get nicked or something. So I think here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I got it. I got this. Your kit should have come with a small piece of double-sided tape. Uh, it is listed in the bill of materials as foam double-sided tape. I'm not sure exactly like what type of tape it's going to be. It should be pretty obvious that it's double-sided tape. And what I want you to do is something like what I'm about to do. I'm going to take my piece of double-sided tape and I'm actually going to cut it down the middle. The actual tape that I'm using is Scotch Extreme Mounting Tape. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to try to create two little like railroad tracks on either side of the video transmitter. Yes. And I'm going to pass the wires down the center channel like so and flip that over and stick that down and I'm just going to kind of press and stick and press and stick. That seems pretty good. The other thing I'm going to do I think is I'm going to pull this out and just give it a couple twists. I can't give it very many twists because it doesn't have enough slack, but give it a couple of twists to take some of the slack out. Again, I don't want tension on it, but I do want to kind of keep it neat and take the slack out so the wires don't get where they're not supposed to be. Yeah, I like that way better. We can just kind of tuck that around there. That's not bad. That's not bad. Could we go over the top? Well, could we go underneath? <gasps> yes. So now let's just lift the flight controller up off the stack. Oh, this is good. We can actually pass this underneath. Yes, that's good. And then I'm just going to push that back down. Be careful not to pinch any wires or anything, but oh yeah, that's good. Got that out of the way looking good. I don't like the camera wire running over the top of the flight controller like this. The reason is twofold. Number one, I'm going to be soldering on the flight controller later. I don't want to risk damaging this wire with a soldering iron. And number two, there's not actually that much room between the flight controller and the top deck once everything's assembled. And a battery strap is going to have to go through and the battery strap is going to be tugging on this wire. So, well, this is one of those cases where if I knew ahead of time that I was going to do it exactly like this, I would have planned ahead, but I didn't. 
I think I'm gonna, yeah, loosen this. I'm gonna take out these screws. Yep, oh, I'm doing it. I want this wire to run exactly the right way. One, this is gonna be so quick, it's not a problem. Okay, push this down so there's slack in the wires. Can I get this out? Ah, yay. Yay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I didn't, it's like a freaking puzzle. Okay, now that that's done, <laughs> whole ESC lifts up. Flight controller, get out of the way, flight controller. ESC lifts up. Come on. Uh, uh, out of the way. Yay, ESC lifts out of the way. Cable goes underneath. ESC goes back down. <laughs> uh, let's check for clearance here. Oh yeah, see, that's great. I got plenty of room there for the wire to go. It's not in the way or anything. And then, very carefully, arms go back in. Oh yeah, now that I know how to do it, it's easy. It's just kind of slightly sideways kind of slightly sideways, shimmy it in, and then, yeah, that goes in, great. That screw goes back in. Ta-da! There we go. See, now the camera's coming out the front, the wire's out of the way. Beautiful, beautiful. If that's the weirdest, most fiddly thing you have to do when building a quadcopter, trust me, you've got enough lucky. I lost the spacers. Make sure the spacers didn't fall off when you were fiddling around like that. Yeah, I lost all the spacers. One, two, three, four. Go back on. And we will, oh, don't forget to reinstall the standoffs on the arm screws. Next, we're gonna get these 3D printed pieces. These are your antenna mounts. And if you've ordered the HD version of this kit, you will have two of them. One of them, the smaller one, is for the walk snail antenna. The larger one is for the DJI 03 antenna. And by the way, I printed these at home. Uh, so, like, if you look, oh, you're like, oh, that's kind of an effed up print. What happened there? I don't know. Blame that on me. I'm sure the ones you get from Lumineer will be perfect. And in order to install this, we're going to need to take these two screws out with a very, very small Phillips head screwdriver. And this little metal bar will lift up out of the way. And that is the retention for these antenna connectors. We are then going to take those antenna connectors off very carefully. Let me show you how I do it. Just come from underneath and apply some upward pressure as close as possible to the little brass connector as possible. And it should lift right off. Once we've done that, we are going to just feed that down through the center of the antenna mount. I might need to sort of offset these just a little bit because I'm not sure they'll both fit side by side. Oh no, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I just pull, just pushed one through so the other came out first. And now, there we go. They both came out. And then this will just friction fit right here. Just press in and friction fit right in there. And this is what we've got. Then we're gonna reinstall these. It doesn't matter which one goes where. And I'm just going to, they just pop on, but you don't wanna to apply too much pressure because if it's misaligned and you push too hard, you could damage it. So we're just gonna try and get that sort of centered up. And if you gently press, you'll kind of feel it lock on and then I kind of just wiggle it around while pressing down until I feel it pop down onto the connector. Just try and get it kind of centered up. You'll feel it's got kind of a lip and just apply a little bit of downward pressure while you wiggle it and it should go right on. I hope we'll reinstall this. As with any DJI device, the next thing we need to do is activate it and update the firmware. And we're gonna do that using this app 
the DJI Assistant 2 Consumer Drone Series. There's a link in the video description below if you need to download and install that. Be aware that there's another version of the app out there, DJI Assistant 2 FPV Drone Series, and for the most part, we're not gonna use that when we're working with the O3 and the uh, Goggles 2. Speaking of goggles, you can bind the O3 Air unit to the Goggles 2, that's what I've got. If you've got the goggles Integra, everything I'm going to show you is going to be the same except for one small thing uh, that I'll talk about when we get there. And I'm also going to show you how to do it with the V2 goggles if you have the V2 goggles. All of them will bind to the O3 air unit. Plug the USB cable into the USB port on the side of the O3 air unit. You do not need to plug a battery in at this time. We can do the firmware update and activation without plugging a battery in. And after a moment, you should see it appear in DJI Assistant. I'm gonna click on that, and it's gonna ask me to activate the device. Yours may or may not ask you to activate the device. Sometimes they seem to be shipped from the manufacturer or from the, from the vendor pre-activated. If it doesn't act ask you to activate it, great. It's already activated. Once you've got it activated, the next thing to do is update the firmware. You will need an internet connection to download the firmware list. And you can see here the latest version at the time that I'm recording this is 01020000. Go ahead and update to that latest version. If yours is already on the latest version, you can skip this part. The process for updating the goggles is basically going to be the same. So I'm not going to show you the goggles too. But if you have the V2 goggles, there is a very important step that you must not miss. If you're going to be using the V2 goggles, then the situation is a little bit more complex because the V2 goggles have several different modes that they can be in. One of the modes allows them to bind to the O3 air unit, and that's what we want. One of the modes lets them bind to the DJI Avada drone. There's a mode that lets it bind to the DJI FPV drone, and there's a mode called the digital FPV system mode that lets it bind to the older air units like the Cadix Vista. So there are four possible modes that the goggles could be in. If your goggles currently are able to bind to an O3 air unit, like this isn't your first O3 air unit, then you're fine. In fact, they're probably already on the latest firmware and you're good to go. But if you have previously been using your V2 goggles with the older air units like the Cadix Vista, there are a specific set of steps you need to go through to make sure that your firmware update is gonna go successfully. And what you need to do is go into the goggle menu and go to settings, device. And I want you to look there and see how many options you have for switch to such and such a mode. Now, in my case, you see three options, switch to Avada, switch to O3, and switch to the DJI FPV drone, and that means that I am completely up to date and I am actually good to go. I don't need to do a firmware update. But if you look there and you only see the option switch to DJI FPV drone, you need to do a firmware update. And what you need to do is you need to switch to DJI FPV drone. And then after you select that menu option, power cycle your goggles, and they will power up in DJI FPV drone mode. Once the goggles are in the DJI FPV drone mode, plug them in, do the firmware update, and after you do that firmware update, you should have the ability to then switch to the O3 and the Avada mode. We want the O3 mode, but it's the same firmware update that unlocks the O3 and the Avada. Um, that's what we need. We need the goggles to be in O3 mode in order to bind them. Incidentally, if your V2 goggles have a very old firmware on them, the Consumer Drone Series app may not recognize them. In that case, you will need to go and download the DJI FPV Series version of the Assistant app, perform a firmware update in the DJI FPV version, and then come back to Consumer Drones and, use, and do another update to make sure you're on the latest firmware. Thanks, DJI. It's so simple. So easy to use. So now here I am in the DJI FPV drone mode. I've just finished doing all my firmware updates. And if I go settings about, I have switch aircraft model. And there I can switch to the O3 mode. And that's what I'm gonna need to do. From here on out, almost everything I tell you is gonna be the same, whichever set of goggles you're using, the goggles two, the Integra, or the V2 goggles. The next thing I'm gonna to need to do is power up the goggles and power up the air unit. I'm gonna power up the goggles first because the air unit has a tendency to get hot 
And so I'm gonna to wanna to leave it powered on as little as possible. Once the air unit finishes powering up, I will have a red LED here, meaning it is not bound. The bind button is just below the LED. You can just barely see it. And I'm gonna press that with a paper clip. And when I do, the red LED will begin blinking. Then I'm gonna press the bind button on my goggles. And on the goggles too, the bind button is right here in between the two eyepieces. And at that point, we should have picture in the goggles. On the V2 goggles, the bind button is right here next to the power plug. And on the goggles Integra, and I'm sorry, unfortunately I don't have one to show you, there is no separate bind button. You long press the power button to activate binding. There is one more thing we need to do to get the full performance out of our O3 air unit. If I go into the menu and I go down to transmission, I want you to notice that my channel mode is set to manual. Yours is probably set to auto, and that's okay. But if you did set yours to manual and go down with a bandwidth of 40 megahertz, you would only see one channel, but I have three channels. I have more channels available to me than you do because you haven't done the ham unlock yet. In order to do the ham unlock, we're gonna download this file from the beyond.d3vl.com website. We're gonna open that zip file up and in it is a file named ham underscore CFG under support. You can also just create this file by yourself. It's just an empty file with no extension and no contents named ham CFG support. Next, we're gonna put an SD card inside the goggles or if you already have one, that's fine too. But we want an SD card that has been formatted inside the goggles. So we'll go to settings, camera, format, goggles SD card, Confirm. Then we will put that SD card into our computer and we will drag that file onto the SD card like so. We will then put the SD card back in the goggles and power cycle the goggles. After we've done that, if we then go into the goggles menu and go to transmission, set the channel mode to manual and the bandwidth to 40 megahertz, we should see that we have three channels available. If that's the case for you, then this unlock was, uh, was successful. Technically, if you live in the European Union, you are not supposed to do this. Practically, that decision is between you and your priest or lawyer, and you will get better performance if you do this. I would like to say that if you don't know about setting your own channels and so forth, it's better to leave the channel mode on auto and let the DJI system handle uh, interference avoidance for you but you will still get better performance by doing the ham unlock, whichever decision you make. At this point, you certainly could go fly, but there's another piece of setup that I think is really, really important to do, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't show it to you, and that is to set up the on-screen display. So the uh, DJI O3 has the ability to talk to the flight controller and read information from the flight controller and then display it in the goggles. And that's really useful. Like imagine driving your car, but you don't have a fuel gauge to tell you when the tank is gonna be empty. Well, I, I actually know people whose car has a broken fuel gauge. And that's not the point. It's not good is my point. You wanna know stuff like that. And the on-screen display is how you know it. Uh, in order to set that up, I'm gonna need to leave this air unit running for a bit. And since I don't want it to overheat, I'm just gonna plug in this little USB fan and you're gonna hear that fan blowings, but it, it, you'll be okay. Let's plug USB into the flight controller, not the O3, the flight controller. And we'll start up Betaflight Configurator. Betaflight Configurator is the app that we're gonna use to configure the flight controller. And if you've never installed it before, I have a separate video that will take you through all the steps of downloading and installing Betaflight Configurator. This is the kind of thing that is perfectly encapsulated in that video, and some people will have already done it and won't need me to explain it. So I'm not gonna break it out separately and explain it here. I'm gonna refer you to that video. It's linked in the video description below. Uh, so pause this video if you need to, go watch that, get Betaflight Configurator installed. If you gotta get your drivers sorted out or any of that nonsense, it's all in that video. And then come back here and we'll both be looking at Betaflight Configurator and be ready to go. And I'm gonna look up here in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and I'm gonna plug USB into my flight controller, and when I do that, this little pull-down here should change to a new serial port. In my case, COM3 appeared. Uh, that's gonna be our flight controller, and we're gonna hit connect. Fail to open serial port. F what's, what? Oh, I know, I know. If you have DJI Assistant running, it grabs the serial port and doesn't let Betaflight Configurator have it. Make sure you've closed DJI Assistant before you try to connect. Yes. Connect. 
Yay! And the simplest way to set up the O3 air unit with a Betaflight flight controller is actually to go to the presets tab. There is actually a preset that will do all the configuration for us. What we're gonna do is we're gonna search right here in the search box and we're gonna search for O3. And we should find this preset, OSD for FPV, WTF, DJI O3, Avatar HD. We're gonna click that and then we're gonna choose these options. We want map to display port enabled. We want set HD OSD enabled. And the last thing we need to know is which UART number this, this air unit is connected to. Uh, a UART, is, it stands for a long computer thingy that nobody says out loud. So we're just gonna call it a UART, U-A-R-T. And a UART is kind of like a USB port on your computer in that like you plug your mouse into it, you plug a peripheral into it. In this case, the peripheral that is connected to the UART is the air unit and it's gonna use that UART to talk to the flight controller about the information it needs to draw the on-screen display in your goggles. Uh, the flight controller has several different UARTs. If we close this here and we go to the ports tab, we can see there are six available UARTs and each of them is gonna be used for some different peripheral that we're gonna to connect to the flight controller. Uh, but we don't know which UART number the air unit is connected to. And we especially don't know that because normally when you wire up a peripheral, you solder the wires. The peripheral will have a TX and an RX wire. And you solder those wires, transmit and receive, to the TX and the RX pads on the flight controller. Then those pads are labeled TX1, TX2, TX3. And that number corresponds to the UART that you've connected to. So normally, you would solder your wires to the flight controller and you would know what UART number you had soldered those wires to. But in this case, we connected the air unit to the flight controller with a plug and we don't know what UART number that plug corresponds to. So we're gonna go to the product page and we're gonna look at the user manual and thankfully there is a user manual, which you can't always take for granted that there will be one, but there is one this time <laughs> and it's gonna show us. Aha, here we go. DJI plug. Here on the underside of the board, we've got the breakout for the DJI plug, and we can see DJI, it's 10 volts ground, TX3 and RX3. That tells us that our air unit is on UART3. So we're gonna go back to the presets tab. We're gonna find our O3 preset. We're going to choose UART3, and then we are going to pick and save and reboot. It turns out that that preset doesn't quite completely configure what we need configured. So there's something we're gonna have to put in manually. We're gonna go to the CLI tab and you're gonna paste in the following lines. I'm gonna put these lines down in the video description so you can copy paste them and you don't have to type them in. The lines are gonna look like this and then you're gonna type the word save in the text box at the bottom of the screen and hit enter. The next thing I want you to do is go into your goggles and go into the menus, go down to settings and display, and you should see there an option for canvas mode. Change that canvas mode option to HD. You will need to have your air unit on and bound and working in order to change that option. Otherwise it'll be grayed out. At this point, you can turn on options here in the OSD, like battery voltage. You can turn that on and when it appears in screen in Betaflight Configurator, it should also appear. Um, I'm actually going to give you a sample layout that I like to use. Again, it'll be down in the video description below and you can copy paste it in. Let me show you how I do that. Here in the CLI tab, I'm just gonna click in the text box here and paste that stuff in and then type the word save. And when you do that, you should see a whole bunch of additional information in the screen of your goggles. If you don't like that, feel free to go back to the OSD tab and you can click these check marks to turn any of these things off. You can drag them around and put them wherever you want. You can personalize it to your heart's content. The next thing to do is to mount the camera in the frame. And in order to do that, you're gonna install it between the two camera side plates as shown here. Please note carefully exactly which screw holes have been used the camera plate have several si uh, screw holes because the dimensions of different cameras are different and the placement of the camera is actually important. You see, if the camera stuck out too far to the front, then these metal side plates wouldn't be able to protect it in a crash. But if the camera was too far to the inside, 
then the side plates would obstruct the view of the camera and that wouldn't be good either. So we want the camera installed so that it is even with or maybe just a little bit behind the side plates and these two holes do exactly that. The reason for the curved bottom uh, hole is that it lets us change the up tilt angle of the camera. We're going to talk more about up tilt angle later in the video. Um, so for the time being, you can just kind of leave the camera loose or you can do whatever you want, but we're going to adjust it later in the video. Also, take note of the exact orientation of the plates. Notice that the plate has a top. It sort of swooshes to the back at the top and this arc is at the bottom. And also note that the inside is completely flat and the outside has this little recess here. Once you've got this installed exactly as I show here, you can press the tabs on the bottom of the side plates into these little slots on the frame. And then once those are pressed in, you're gonna get one of these small screws and you're gonna screw it into these two screw holes to hold the camera plates in place. I have one more little tip for you as the owner of an O3 Air unit that isn't directly related to this series, but I, f I just would not feel like I'd done my job if I didn't warn you. The O3 camera lens is really big and really easy to scratch, and the frame does its best to protect it, but it, it can't do everything. I strongly recommend that if you fly the O3 Air unit, you invest in a set of, well, this is a full set of ND filters, which is a thing that cinematic professionals use to get cinematic professional looking video. But what you really want, and you can buy this separately and by itself, you just want the clear protective filter and it pops right onto the front of the O3 camera. Buy several, they will break, they will get scratched, and you will be really glad that you're, because you can't get the lens to the O3 camera separately. You have to replace the entire camera and it's like a hundred bucks. This is an investment well, well worth having. I'll put a link in the video description where you can pick it up. So to recap, we have installed our O3 Air unit, installed our camera, plugged it into the flight controller, activated and updated firmware on everything, and then set up HD OSD in the flight controller so we can have all the information that we need on screen in our goggles. At this point, head on back to the playlist linked in the video description below or a card will appear here on screen in just a second and find the next video that applies to you. That's going to be, well, the next one is going to be me installing the Walksnail video transmitter, so you're probably not going to watch that and it'll probably be whatever the video is after that. See you there.